Imagine having to do everything in life with just one arm. Would the thought of picking up a bow even cross your mind? I met up with Sean Anderson, Paralympian and W1 athlete at the World Championships in Den Bosch. I first met Sean in 2015 when we went to South Africa for a training camp. He welcomed us to his club so we could prepare for the Rio Olympics during our winter season. Here I learned he is not only a class archer, but an awesome human being too. Losing his arm and later on function in his lower body has never stopped him from working hard to achieve his goals. This way of life has taught me some lessons in my own and gave me a deeper sense of appreciation in general. As a way of saying thank you, but also just to share his amazing story with you all, we wanted to make this video for you guys to enjoy. We understand it's a bit on the longer side, but we really enjoyed having this conversation and we believe it was very worth it. So Sean, <laughs> your uh, first uh, appearance on Triple Trouble, so this <laughs> yeah. is a, a premiere. Yeah. Um, first of all, um, I want to start with uh, thank you for uh, for appearing on uh, on our channel and uh, thank you for having me on the yeah. channel. It's cool. So I, I I first met you in 2015, I think, when we uh, went to the uh, South Africa for a training camp in uh, Pretoria. Correct. Um, and back then uh, i was amazed by you lost your arm but you were still positive in life and you were still uh, shooting a lot and, and enjoying everything you did um, and then in the time that i that was between so uh, last year i was there as well three years uh, between yeah uh, you also lost the function in your legs correct um, but still you're still enjoying <laughs> enjoying life and you're still enjoying your shooting yeah and can you tell us a little bit about um, how you find energy and how you find motivation to still keep going like this? That's a good question. Um, I find the energy and the motivation is when I watch you guys and everybody else shooting and then and I want to be at the top and I want to I want to put the work in and and it's not giving up, you know. It, yeah. I, I don't know how to give up. I, I can't. I don't believe in the word can't. So yeah. when 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 I got the opportunity to be on the bow and I had to relearn how to shoot now in a different division and everything, I just put the work in and I persevered and I carried on persevering. And those days that I really feel bad and I really feel like things aren't coming together, I've got a good support structure around me back home. Yeah. So I can pick up the phone and I can phone a friend or I can phone a, I can see somebody at the, at, at, at this university where I'm based. Um, so that helps me a hell of a lot. I've got, I've, I've got an amazing family behind me, yeah. so that, that, that's the most important. If it wasn't for my family, I don't think I'd be where I am today. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, I, I persevere because for me, it's about showing young people out there who have got opportunities that, that no matter what obstacle comes in your life, you can overcome it. And it doesn't mean you have to be in a wheelchair, but whatever problem you're facing at that time, I think you, if you put your mind to it, you can overcome it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think what's interesting, every time I talk to you, I feel a bit more inspired. Uh, Thank you. So, so yesterday I, I hit my hand against a knock and I thought it was really shit yeah. uh, until I spoke to you again and I, I realized like uh, this is nothing in, in, like, in the course of a lifetime. Uh, something as small as, uh, as grabbing in a knock is, is nothing. And uh, to put things in perspective like that is really something that I admire and, uh, and I learn from you. Thank so, you very much. Um, now for me, just being here has been a, a huge honor. I mean, coming, you know, when I knew that there was a, there was a chance that I could come out earlier, because for me now I have to. This is my first travel since my accident. Yeah. So um, we we were really concerned about my my health and that. Yeah. But so far, touch wood, everything's been going well. Um, but to come out here and spend time with you guys at Parkendall, it, it's been unbelievable. And yeah. you know, um, I always say when you when you want to get motivated and you want to get to the top, you you you. you Get around the guys who are at the top and, yeah. and that pushes you to try harder and and that's been 
something that this week's really been really been cool for me. And when you guys came out in December, it was it was so nice because that that inspired me again to work harder again, and it made me realise that all this work that I put in back home, it, it's not for nothing. It's yeah. the, the, the results are coming, and yeah, I mean the Archery family is just one big family, and and I'm really looking forward now to get into to 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 the World Champs. Yeah, and um, because you know, that's why you're in the Netherlands. You're here, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're here to compete in the World Championships. I'm there to compete and be a, a competitor and I'm being to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. You know, so I don't want to sound vain, but yeah, I, I mean, I've always been a person who, who wants to compete at the, at my highest level and yeah. give it all I've got and and not give up. And uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing all my friends and and getting the job done and hopefully securing a slot for Tokyo. Yeah. That's that's the big reason we're here, and. Uh, being here for this week has been awesome. I must admit, I, I could easily do this more. <laughs> yeah, I enjoy it. Last time in, uh, in Rio, you were in a different uh, class, a different shooting class. So you changed your, uh, your setup a bit. Uh, you now shoot without a scope and without a peep sight, for instance. Yes, correct. Yeah. How has this changed your shooting as a whole? You, you get that respect for the recurves that, <laughs> that, that I've always had, but I mean, you really realize what archery is about when you're shooting without a peep and without a scope. Um, yeah. I had to change pound each side to go down to, we're not allowed to shoot over 45 pounds in yeah. W1. I had to change my whole setup and then I had to learn to shoot again because shoot with a scope and a peep, you can make those few hand talk mistakes and you still get a result. Yeah. Unfortunately, without the peep and, and without, you, you got to learn how to line up the bow properly. Yeah. You got to learn that you don't tilt the bow. And you really got to follow through properly with your front hand and that and and that's something that i've been working really hard on so yes um it, it, it's been a big change for me for the first i would say the beginning of since last year when i started training again and up until even january i was still really fighting to get good results and and get good get up where i want to be yeah. where i know i can be but yeah um luckily two weeks before coming here um i had a very good result back home and okay. and and that that just gives you that lift and that boost that to get yeah. you and this last week trading yeah i've been shooting well i've really been putting good arrows in yeah. so i'm happy um you know i've done the work so it's not that i'm coming to world champs to do the work i've done the work now it's just climbing that ladder and hoping that i can peak at world champs and yeah. it'll be really cool and and how far along do you think you are uh, because you started from zero basically when yeah. you started shooting again it was a different class you were in a different condition uh, how far if you would have to name a percentage uh, would you think you are on, on getting back to your uh, your top level I would say 70 percent uh, still there's still a lot to learn that's the nice thing about this division um, you know it, it, it's every day when you, once you think you've just got it right the next day you realize oh, I've done something wrong again you know so I, I would say I'm, 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 I'm between 70 and 75 percent there yeah. I'm not near where I know I can achieve that um, yeah. in my heart I know I can be a, I really believe if I work really hard I could be shooting the scores that I was shooting when I was shooting CMR yeah so um, um, and and I can't see why I can't do that if I put the work in yeah. so yeah um, I still got a way to I still got a bit of weight to go so that's that's why the goal for this trip is not trying to do anything crazy. It's just to secure that slot, and then, then yeah. we'll focus on after that. We'll focus on the next goal. But yeah, you have more than a year to prepare between exactly. the World Championships and uh, the actual Olympic I mean, Games or yeah. Paralympics. So that's that's where I'm going to put. So now I'm here to learn and 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 just taking as much as what I can. And this whole trip so far has been a learning curve for me. You know, it's my first travel on the plane and 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 long hours and. Yeah transfers and this and that so that's really been an eye-opener for me and there's a few changes that we can bring to the to the list um i'm really working on controlling the controller builds yeah the rest you can't control you can't control the weather especially here in the netherlands no, in, in the netherlands <laughs> the weather is something to be reckoned with but yeah. you cannot change anything about the weather so you yeah. just have to accept it and deal you with go it. with it yeah. yeah um so the controllables we can control and that's what we've done this week we've we've brought things into say okay if it's like that we're going to do that but yeah I'm, I'm 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 really happy with my prep uh, i think i've really put the work in and coming this week before has been awesome and uh, i got a lot of people to thank and Jochem yeah from pop and yep. and 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 your 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 dutch association have been amazing and you guys as well i mean a lot of people don't always realize when they see you guys on the line that we all we all can have fun together and yeah. we're all serious as well and, and it's really been an honor to be here with you guys that's really nice to hear um 
It's a bit of a weird question, but I've been playing with it in my mind. Um, let's say back in 2016, where, when you were at your peak uh, of your shooting, I think at least. Mm. Um, do you reckon you are as good as a one-armed archer as you would be with, uh, with a release in your hand? Or do you think that it's a definite, um, a definite advantage to hold your release actually in your hand instead of having a brace? No, there's definitely an advantage with holding a release. Yeah. You know, you, you can you can go into the wall better. Yeah. So you can you can push and pull. Yeah. And and that that is definitely the 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 whole defining of archery is the push yeah. and pull motion. And I've really had to work hard now, especially shooting in my new division. Yeah. That push and pull is so important because if I don't put enough pressure going into the back, I don't get the result in front. So um, that has changed quite a bit since when I was shooting in 2016. In 2016, I could push and I would get the result. Yeah. Now I'm having to push and then I'm having to manipulate my shoulder to get yeah. that pull motion back. Almost as if you were shooting a recurve and going yeah. through the clicker. Yeah. So, um, yes, having two arms, definitely a, uh, there's definitely an advantage. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. Are there days of which you wish you had two arms or have you accepted uh, your faith in that, in that sense? I'm a better person. I've learned to accept it. I've learned to to achieve things with one arm that many people can't even do with two arms. Yeah. I've um, and now that I'm in a wheelchair, that's been one of the hardest acceptance for me. Yeah. It took me a long time to accept that I'm in a wheelchair. And now and again, I need to ask for help because I'm not that type of person to yeah. ask for help. Um, so that's been a real hard acceptance. Accepting something doesn't mean you're going to give up. It just no. means you you're dealing with it, and and it means you you're okay with what's going on. So I'm still trying to get deal with being in the wheelchair. It's still tough. There's still many days that I, I wish it never happened. Yeah. But, but I've accepted it now and I've accepted now and again to say, hey, can you help me? Um, it's, it's not a sin to us. And nine out of 10 people are prepared to help. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I lost my arm 16 years ago. Yeah. Um, I amputated about four and a half years ago through medical reasons. I was yeah. having problems with medical reasons. Um, you know, a lot of people ask me, would, would I have a robotic arm, put on my arm? It's not going to change short. Yeah. Um, I, I've learned to do things with one arm. Um, um, and and if, if, you know, if I, if I look at my kids, my, my, my son doesn't even know me with two arms. He, yeah. When he was born, I, I didn't have my other arm. So he's always known me with one arm. And we've achieved everything together, what we do together. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a better person because I've got one arm. But my life has taken a whole different route, which I'm, I'm very thankful for. Yeah. And I, I'm really, you know, um, I would have nev never got into archery if, it, if I, I don't think I would have tried archery because, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, so this is something that just amazes me, that how you can see everything in a positive light, uh, even though most people would see, um, like from the outside, you would assume that somebody in a wheelchair uh, is struggling with it whereas it seems like you can always see the bright side of it you struggle you get your yeah. struggles i mean these i mean flying here was a struggle for me yeah. flying here was a really a big struggle because um it was different and, yeah. and 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 you know um a big thing i think for a lot of people in wheelchairs i i'm speaking for myself but i, I gather with a lot of us is is your integrity and we're not we're not stupid because we're in a wheelchair no, we're not exactly. um um you don't have to fear us but you know, sometimes I just feel you get treated not like a guy who's not in a wheelchair sometimes, and yeah. that, that's upsetting. Um, I'd like that to change. I must say, arriving here was unbelievable. I mean, I got treated like gold at the airport, and, and, and that was really something amazing. But yeah, we have our bad days, and, and like anybody else will have a bad day, but yeah, sometimes our bad days are really bad, and, 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 and uh, you really gotta work deep, deep, dig deep, deep to get through it yeah. um you got to really pull on all your energy and, and you got to say to yourself yeah you know like today i i stupid thing I, I i was trying to get into the wheelchair and i slipped off my bend and i bumped my head yeah now I, I don't have a phone nearby to phone barbara to come and get me or anybody to help me so i had to get myself back in to my chair and that took a good half an hour and at one stage I felt like just taking the chair and throwing it across the room, but you, you can't do that because no. you're, not, you, you're not winning anything by that. You're just making your situation worse. So, yeah, you've got to deal with it. And, and I just feel if, if you've got something facing at that time in, in, in life, no matter if you're in a wheelchair or not in a wheelchair, and you've got an obstacle, 
the best way is to deal with it and, 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 and make sure you surround yourself with positive people. And that's, that's something I've really worked hard on, keeping negative en- energy out there and, and keeping positive people around me and keeping and, and, and staying positive. Even when I see people on positive, I try to keep them myself positive. And sometimes that rubs off and I'm, I'm happy when that does, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it sure does to us. Uh, we <laughs> uh, we always enjoy having you around because it you just uh, bring a positive vibe in the, into the whole uh, uh, situation. So uh, we're happy and grateful for that. Um, something I forgot to ask in the beginning, and I don't know if you want to uh, elaborate on it, but how did you uh, end up losing your arm and uh, the function under your waist? Um, the arm was super bikes. Sixteen okay. years ago, I was in a I was involved in a superbike accident. Yeah. I, I broke my brachial plexus and I tore nerve ends out of my, which damaged my arm. Yeah. Uh, my front part of my arm was um, vergrys, so it was basically, I yeah. smashed it completely, yeah. and so there was not much that they could do for me with that. So what happened is in about 2015, just before qualifiers, about uh, no, 2014, end of 2014. Yeah. I was really bad clean with pain and I was having bad blood circulation and that. So we had to make a decision and I decided to amputate, which yeah. which was a very good decision. I should have done it back then when the doctor said, you know, it's not it's not gonna work. Yeah. Um, but you still always believe it will come back. So yeah, um, that, that's the arm side. Um, the legs, uh, October the 7th, 2017. We just got back from the Olympics. Yeah. Um, I had uh, I went to Beijing for world champs just before Beijing I had a shoulder operation um, recovered really well from that and uh, went to Beijing didn't have the results in Beijing that I wanted but I knew why and, and I knew what I was working towards yeah. got back from there and, and we took our first family vacation in believe it or not four years because yeah. everybody thinks going overseas and travelling is family it's vacation it's not it, it's, yeah. it's our jobs yeah. and, and we do it because we love it and uh, so we had a family vacation and uh, I love deep sea fishing, I love anything. And uh, I rented a boat to take me and my family out deep sea fishing. Yeah. And in, unfortunately, the skipper that we trusted ourselves with, he didn't do what he was supposed to do and uh, ended up getting hit by a wave. And uh, I ended up getting my family off and on the charter there was another family and I stayed on the boat to help them get off and I got them off. And when I tried to jump off the boat, I slipped and I fell next to the boat and the boat came down on my back. Yeah. And I got stuck under the boat for about three minutes and I started drowning and somehow I popped out and yeah. I got to my family and then um, at that time I, I had no feeling in my left leg. My right leg was pins and needles and yeah. I couldn't tell my family because we were all bleeding and everybody's worried we're in the middle of the ocean and in the end, uh, luckily I got my family, We got they got out with with help of lifeguards and everything and then when when i woke up I, I basically apparently i was recessed on the beach and when i woke up i i was lying in hospital and i got told from my t9 the the impact went on t9 and, yeah. and caused like a impact on my spinal cord and uh, yeah so it's nerveful nerve damage yeah it's all nerve damage and and for the people who are not physios because i have no idea where is the t9 about it's around about just above by the belly button down okay. yeah so i've got little feeling from here down basically no feeling yeah. so in the last 19 months i've had to undergo quite a bit of i was in rehab for two for two months yeah. um after the accident i was in icu for quite a while and then transferred into rehab when i was strong enough spent two months there got home which people a lot of people don't know and then my house burned down the next day yeah so we as a family dealt with that as well. Yeah. And you know, that's when you start wondering, yeah, but you know, out of the light, after building the house again, we were able to build the house that I can use my wheelchair in it. So there was positive that came out of that. Right in the beginning, it didn't feel like it, but yeah, at yeah. the end, there was a big positive. Yeah, this is definitely something that I was on about earlier when mm-hmm. you, uh, when I said to you, you can always see positives in, in certain things. Yeah. And, and uh, burning down a house in, in any case, it wouldn't be uh, a positive, I think, but... No, that day it wasn't. I must say we took it hard as a family because, yeah. you know, my whole family's been dealing with what I've gone through. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we dealt with it, got through it. And then my health, my health started taking quite a big turn. I started battling with bladder infections and battling with this and battling with that. Um, and uh, in the end, I've had to have a super pubic catheter now put in permanently. So 
um, that's helping a lot with the bloody infection. So, yeah. you know, I know it's, it sounds funny, but those are the things that we have to go through as yeah. disabled people. And yeah, you've got routines. So when I wake up, I wake up an hour earlier, or an hour and a half earlier, do my routine, get my stuff done, and then, then, then I can take on the day. Yeah. But now, yeah, I'm, I'm quite fortunate back home. When I go to the university, I've got somebody who helps me to get me out of my car, get my stuff out. So, because normally when I do it myself, it takes me an hour longer and I lose that hour of training. So, yeah. so now I've got someone. And the nice thing is I'm, I'm going to start teaching him how to shoot because I'm quite keen to try and teach him. Yeah. And the other nice thing that's come out of it, um, um, I'm really, I'm working hard. I've always been working hard in promoting the sport of disabled archery and archery. Yeah. So I'm coaching quite a bit back home. But I've managed, I've really managed to bring three, two of the guys who, who are with me on this trip, um, on this trip who are coming, flying out now are guys that I brought into the sport and I've been coaching and I've got yeah. them up to this level where they're coming to the world champs. Yeah, that's, and, that's great. And, and that, that's been a big dream of mine, not just to be the only one always coming to world champs, but to have a team. And we've got a team now coming out, three archers, and two of them I brought to the sport. The other archer was in the sport and came back to the sport, which was really great. So, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's been a huge for me that, that that's a bigger achievement to me than just me being uh, what I've achieved you know yeah. and then back home I've got guys who are quadriplegics who are in wheelchairs and doctors have said they're not going to be able to do anything and they're shooting at competitions yeah. now so well, archery is an amazing sport in that sense because there's pretty much no one who can not do archery exactly yeah. if you've got a will there's a way yeah. and uh, I taught Eric how to shoot and he's using his ear to release his, his bow and he's shooting well and, yeah. he, and he's having fun and and that's the most important. Like I always say to the people and the kids I coach and the parents and that, it's not about all, all our kids must become Olympic athletes or Olympic top archers, as long as they're having fun in a sport that yeah. they really enjoy. And that's the one thing about archery. It's, yeah. It'll give you more energy than you take. Yeah. yeah. Everybody looks at archery and thinks, uh, but it's such a challenge. And, and, and that's what I love about it. You know, I come from sports like ice hockey and things like that. And into archery, where it's calm and, and, and relaxed. But... It's that it's that, that self challenge, you know. Yeah. You, you, if you do a bad shot, there's nobody else to blame. Exactly. It's yourself, and yeah. it goes from hectic around you to hectic inside. So your, your head, head. Yeah. yeah, and 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 that's the big thing. So yeah, that that that's that's something I'm um, I've really worked hard on, and it, it's quite funny. I, I I'm I'm feeling more. I wouldn't say I'm not. I was less prepared, but I have put a hell of a lot of mental work in for this this world champs, yeah. and which I haven't, I did in the pot, but not as much as what I've done in the, so I'm really feeling good. I'm, I'm physically yeah. strong, I'm mentally strong, the health is in a good place, so yeah, and, uh, and thank goodness I've got a physio this time who's with me, traveling with yeah. me, so that, that helps a hell of a lot. But yeah, uh, that couldn't have happened without the sport or my guys back home from the university, from Tux University and them, and yeah, I'm so grateful for that, and I'm really grateful to the guys here at Parpendale and and you guys and the National Federation, they've been, it's been awesome. It's really yeah. been amazing. Well, well, thank you very much for this talk. And I, uh, I mostly just wish you all the best for the World Championships. Same to you. Uh, yeah. you, you it's your world as well. And, yeah. and uh, you know, it's like we were talking earlier on today, and it's, a lot of people can laugh about it, but I always, it, it's, it's, you know, when you, you surround yourself with people who, who are at the top of the level, yeah. you... You want to perform at that same it's, level. And it's that's, inspiring, yeah. Yes, and that's it. And that's what, what it was for me this week again. So thanks. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Good luck. Thanks, buddy. Cool. <laughs> was that good? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Well, take it.